Welcome to the Art, Food and Pleasure podcast. My name is Soskia de Wal. I'm a fine art food photographer fascinated by the pleasure of eating. And therefore I won an international photography award. I am co-founder of Michelin star restaurant and art gallery Olivijn in Haarlem. And I am curious, what is the role of food in art and vice versa? Therefore, I engage with the best food photographers, artists, chefs and curators around the world. I don't think I'm an artist, but an artisan, because then I have uh, I know my craft very well, and I can uh, work with um, you know people who, who uh, commission me to do the picture to come to a result that they want to show. So today I'll talk to a food photographer from Amsterdam. He is well known by all the big chefs in the Netherlands. Everybody knows him. He started in the 90s where he uh, did his first food photography book with Jonny Boer from the Liberijen. Before Photoshop, he came with the idea to hand color black and white photographs of restaurant interiors. He saw all the big changes and now with the, now we are in the biggest change ever. And now he sees opportunities in the food industry. And now he's using his enormous network to gain new business with Cook Like a Chef. So welcome to the podcast Art, Food and Pleasure. And uh, welcome Jan. Well, uh, happy to be here. Yes, thank you for uh, for um, for your time already. And the main question is, is food art? So what do you think about it? Well, that's a very, very difficult one. Then, then you have to define what art is first. And there's many definitions about what is art. So is art, you know, is, is a person who paints a picture an artist or... Is he an artist when his work is accepted in a museum? Uh, when is somebody an artist? So I would rather say something different. I would say that uh, food or creating food is a creative process, just like art is. An apple is food, but an apple is not art. I would say, like, is cooking art or is, is somebody's creation of a new dish art? Is, that's what you probably mean, eh? Yes, well, I had a, a few conversations about uh, when uh, I started out on uh, on Clubhouse to to discuss this matter, is food art? And everybody was saying, yes, food is art. And then the discussion came up, like, how how is it possible that food is art? Because I, I believe that the, that, that the chefs are processing it. So the chefs are artists and that the food is a, just a product when you do something with it, just like a writer. We, I had a discussion with um, Ronald Gippard about this too. Well, you are an artist too, because when you take out the words, your existing subjects, and you transform it into your words, and then you're having a new book, and that's your kind of art. I definitely think that... Uh that there's a, a creative process in getting um, uh, uh, mixing ingredients and cooking them and all the process involved to creating like a perfect uh, kind of a taste or that makes people, uh, that moves people because they're like, oh, this food is so great. And even looking at the plate, they're like, oh, so I think that uh, an excellent dish made by a very good chef can be like the same thing as uh, looking at a painting except that a painting you cannot eat but you can also eat and taste the dish so there's an extra dimension there uh, and that's the tasting yeah thank you but do you consider yourself as an artist too oh that depends um that's also again what is an artist um so uh, an artist who is um you know working from the inside to 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 uh express something that is more than um, the product that he's doing that he's searching for something or that he wants to uh, show the world something or believe something or is uh, uh, but i'm not sure if um, see I, i do a lot of commercial work so i do photo shoots for chefs and dishes and i i i, I light I, i i make their dishes as nice as i can um, Then I don't think I'm an artist, but an artisan, because then I have uh, I know my craft very well, and I can uh, work with um, you know people who who uh, commission me to do the picture 
to come to a result that they want to show. Uh, but then also, of course, as a photographer, I have done in the past and sometimes still do, uh, you know, work on things that are, um, you know, that I try to create that have to do with myself. And um, yeah, maybe, maybe in that way, I am sometimes an artist. But uh, I'm also a professional photographer working for uh, on commission and doing what, what other people ask of you. I believe um, that you're totally right, because when you're working for chefs, you're kind of registering and, and making pictures of the dishes for the chefs, because the chefs are then the artist and you're the artisan. So tell me about your career path. Okay, well, I started very young in photography. I was already... Uh, working as a photographer in in high school so when i was very young an aunt gave me a little uh, camera and a little kit to develop my own um, films and to pre and then uh, uh, my father had a slide projector and then we figured out uh, he helped me a little bit with that we found a dark room in the house and we um, used the we, we put the film in the slide projector and project it on the wall and put a piece of photo paper in front of it. And then we uh, developed the picture. So then I started uh, learning to um, print my own black and white pictures. And this was, this was already when I was 11, so before high school. And then I was in high school, I saved up and I had bought an enlarger and, uh, and a, a little bit better camera. And I started shooting the parties at school. And then after the party, I would uh, print all the pictures and hang all the pictures. And this was documentary, like just documenting the parties. And then I would hang all the pictures up on the walls in school and people could order them from me. So then that uh, very soon I was, uh, I, was, uh, I was already making money as a photographer in high school. Uh, then after high school, I didn't immediately become a photographer, but I uh, was doing many other things, but also uh, with food, working in a little, uh, how do you say it, uh, one of those little, uh, this was a long time ago, and he had these little stores who sold uh, um, healthy food, like, uh, you know, the, the grains and the beans and everything uh, organic. And I was working in the store. And I was also uh, um, cooking for students in the in the in the student house where I lived, and um, sort of had a little little uh, illegal restaurant. And then I started doing. Um, uh, I went to the, get the diplomas that I needed for uh, becoming a photographer. So I learned a lot from that. And then after that, I went to uh, art school for a few years. And then I guess that's how it all uh, it all started. And then because of my interest in food, very soon I started combining, you know, uh, uh, food and uh, uh, looking, uh, going to restaurants to see if I could, uh, they can become clients. And then I had like a very quick start because I walked into one of the best restaurants in Holland that wasn't the best yet, but a starting restaurant. And that was the Libreia. And they did not have any Michelin stars or anything. But this guy had fire, and he was like, oh, I love your work. We're going to make a cookbook. And I said, wow, cool, let's do that. He says, yeah, but, um, yeah, I don't really have any money, so I need you to, uh, to uh, you know, we'll make, uh, you make, come and make some pictures, and then, uh, and then we're going to see if we could find a publisher. And I said, okay, well, that's cool. <laughs> and then I did that, and we immediately found a publisher, and we made our first cookbook, and then he got his... Uh, uh, and then, you know, the publisher here paid me normally. And then um, uh, he got his first Michelin star. And then uh, soon we made another cookbook. And then he got a second Michelin star. And we made, um, like, many cookbooks together. Uh, and then he got his third Michelin star. And by that time, I was uh, actually well-known in, in Holland as a food photographer. Yes, you were the food photographer from the first hour in the Netherlands, if I may say so. <laughs> Well, not really. You had a few uh, older ones than me that were doing the the great chefs before Yanni Boer. Uh, so there was a few of those uh, as well. You still see those uh, cookbooks around, which are fun to see because that was when everybody was building beautiful still lives. So who was your inspiration then in that time? 
as uh, the with the food photography. Oh boy, I had I had I had um, more inspirations that I had from art school uh, instead of the other food photographers. I was really never inspired by other food photographers, except I was inspired by cookbooks, and I don't even know the names of the photographers, but that I saw Spanish photographers were doing and Spanish chefs were doing. And I think that a lot of the Dutch chefs at that time were also looking what's going on in Spain. And But my, my um, inspiration as photographers when I was in art school, those were the, the surrealists. That was uh, Man Ray, and uh, I like Magritte, surrealist things, and that was what I was doing more for myself. So that's uh, later on I made a cookbook called Magic in the Kitchen that was more inspired on that, with sort of uh, montages of uh, chefs doing impossible things uh, when Photoshop started. Before that, I was doing this with uh, cutting things out with the scissors and pasting them. It was my Magic in the Kitchen uh, series. Was it the, the the same book that people could order from their favorite chef and their favorite restaurant? Yeah, 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 yeah. That was a, that was a very big big book. About uh, the size was A5 paper size or, or bigger even, and a very luxurious book. And uh, it was like the book was in a sleeve. It was all you know printed as expensive as you can, you could. And I my printer was became a, a partner because I couldn't obviously pay the printing, but he liked the idea. Um, and then I I made that book, and that became like a, a very big hit, uh, which I also made uh, a lot of money on at that time. Actually, that that was an artistic project. And that was a little bit before I was good at shooting food <laughs> because my first cookbook with the Libre, I didn't really know how to sh shoot food. And Yanni uh, um, just said, hey, uh, Herman Brood, a famous Dutch painter and uh, musician, is a, a sort of a friend of him and always came to the restaurant and was also from the same town. And he said, you know what we do? We take his paintings and we put the plate on top of the painting and we shoot that. So I just did that, and um, I didn't really know how to light food well. And then uh, that book is sort of completely like different as far as shooting food goes. And then the second book, then I had by that time, uh, uh, you know, studied about what other, you know, looking at a lot of uh, other photography books and figuring out uh, how they did it. And then I... Uh, did that as well and added my own touch to it, of course. Which year are we talking about now? When you started out with your first book with Yoni Boer? I would say, uh, I would say the beginning 90s. You go a long way. Mm -hmm. And tell me about the time that you, um, that you painted in uh, ph photography before uh, Photoshop came in. Oh, yeah, yeah. That was something I did... Uh, uh, after art school, and I combined this with the photo montages that I did. Then I would make uh, uh, black and white prints, and I was very good at uh, hand coloring photos, which gave a very special atmosphere. And it gave such a special atmosphere that it was also very good for um, shooting interiors. For And then uh, it was also like a business thing, because then I found out that if you shoot an interior, you could do all kinds of things with a photo and it still looked like a photo and had its own feel because of the hand coloring, but you could also do things that weren't possible in a picture and like that painters do. Like for example, if you shoot an interior and you have a light bulb, little lights hanging, the lights will become little white or a little, um, yeah, maybe sometimes a little bit orange, but they become flat circles. Uh, but because of the paint techniques, we could make these become round. And if you had a white tablecloth in a restaurant, uh, it would have, uh, you know, a tablecloth to have shadows uh, where they're hanging. And then we would make the white a little bit orange and the shadow a little bit blue. And that way add atmosphere, just like you see that uh, painters did in um, impressionist painters would do, like adding, exaggerating colors a little bit to add to the atmosphere. So colors that you don't really see, except if you really look through your eyebrows, you see that colors in places where you don't 
normally see the color, but then... Uh, the surrealistic touch. Not really surreal. The Impressionist uh, did that. It was because it's actually a little bit of the reality, but exaggerated a little bit. And you know that as well, because you use mushrooms. So if you look at somebody's face after the mushrooms, then, then uh, you see the face getting like colors in certain places. And that's not because it's not there. It's just the, the, the things are exaggerated. But is, it, is that impressionistic or is it surrealistic? <laughs> No, no, it's, that's for uh, what the Impressionists did. The Surrealists were more like creating a, a unreal dream-like situations, and of course that also adds to that. But if you just look at a Van Gogh painting, you see exactly what I mean with the, with the color. Yes, you're really an entrepreneur when it comes to food photography and art making, and um, I think you're really an artist. Uh, but you know, artists artists have to uh, have to survive. Yes, yes. <laughs> so, so the problem is that if you're an artist without being uh, uh, being able to sell anything, then you cannot be an artist anymore. Or you do it in your free time with another job. You know, you can be a taxi driver and then in the nighttime uh, paint. But I don't really see myself as an artist. So I must honestly say that I am. I am more. Um, um, Okay, I have ideas, sort of like artistic ideas, and then I I, I pour that into a, or mold that into a way that I can make some money on it. So the hand-colored pictures, we would make like uh, books about restaurants, uh, and then the pictures would be hand-colored, giving it the other atmos extra atmosphere, and then we would uh, organize uh, exhibitions, and people would buy the original photos. Uh, so it was, uh, yeah. Yeah, so it was always, uh, and then after you do something for a while, you get sick of it, and then you have to uh, think of something completely new. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but that that suits you because you you find new ideas everywhere. So creative in, in that way. Yeah. But you also made like a takeaway dishes. Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, with uh, 30 uh, restaurants in Holland, uh, I was doing. I had a, uh, but that was completely nothing to do with my photography only uh, because I knew all the chefs and then I was very much into food and I thought hey wouldn't it be wonderful if we could be able to use all these products at home that the chefs use because in that time there weren't all these special stores for uh, for great foods and uh, the chefs all had their little addresses for for getting things uh, and I thought then, well, why don't, you know, make little movies and the chef shows how to make a dish. And then everybody gets the food in the amount that they need it. So you don't have to buy like uh, a whole bunch of basilicum, but you only get like one little twig. And that was the idea. And then um, we started like that. Uh, but then uh, we like, well, maybe we could help. The people at home by making some things ready for them already like the sauces and this and that so then i had like at that time i had uh, uh, four degrees of uh, difficulty the one was you just cook it completely with the ingredients and then the easiest one was you just put something into the oven or you uh, put the, the vacuum bag in uh, in boiling water and you're done and then things in between and, uh, and now, of course, because of Corona, it, it, it is booming. We did started that in 2018. And then uh, I guess I got very lucky that, uh, that the Corona came. And of course, things will change again after Corona. So uh, then I might be doing my photography again. <laughs> yeah, but still you're, you're making beautiful photography for Cook Like a Chef. And you're making food videos on how to prepare the dishes and... Uh, yeah, well, that's more more practical. That's that's has then it becomes very business like, of course, because you have to do it in such a way that just people that it's clear for people what are we going to buy and what does it look like. And but it needs to be appealing. <laughs> yeah, yeah, of course, of course. But that's more the uh, that's that's more just knowing your uh, your profession. Yeah, and so how does your average working day look like? 
Uh, well, that's hard to say. A year ago, before Corona, shooting for restaurants and hotels about three, four times uh, a week. So like three, four days a week, I was uh, commissioned to work for hotels and restaurants. And I was working for cookbooks for chefs. And, uh, and I was also publishing my own little cookbook. So the last one I did came out in December 2019. And that was a book on uh, sort of like a guidebook with uh, creative pictures that you show interiors and also uh, the liveliness in restaurants and shooting the dishes. And I would publish those books. And I had a lot of my own, um, uh, a lot of clients, from big hotels uh, everywhere. And that uh, in the month of March, and that started at the beginning of March when people sort of were getting the feeling, hey, something is going to happen. And so people started canceling their uh, their jobs. And by the time it was the end of March, then the lockdown was there. And there were, I went from uh, three, four days a week to uh, actually zero. And I did not really have other customers in the food business that started booming. So I did not work for supermarkets, unfortunately. And I did not work for uh, catering companies and... Uh, and um, and of course, the restaurants uh, are are uh, are trying to survive, and that survival, um, obviously, they're not in a position to spend money on photographers, and also the profession has changed for a lot of things they do. A good picture on your phone by somebody who is good at it is often good enough for what they want to show. Yeah. Do you think that the food photography has changed over the years since the? since there are more food bloggers and influencers? Oh, yeah, that's changed completely. That's changed completely. I've had like a, a year ago or two years ago, I would have clients and they come to me and say, Jan, um, uh, we just opened a new restaurant, but it's more informal. Can you shoot it Instagram style? <laughs> so I said, okay. And at that time, you know, I'm not, uh, I wasn't that much into these new uh, social media things. I have some kind of a dislike for it, I must honestly say, even though I know it's very important these days, but I just sort of feel it's a waste of my time <laughs> somehow or, or another. But anyway, I I do it. And I started looking at what everybody was doing on Instagram. And then I said, oh, okay. So that's just sort of more casual and uh, shooting from above. And it's a faster look, a more, faster, more casual look, which you, people who are good at it... Uh, it can be quite nice as well. Uh, a lot of it's all the same. You know, all of a sudden you saw that uh, every restaurant would just put all their dishes on a table and they uh, would stand on a chair and uh, get their phone and take a shot of it from the top. And, uh, well, that would be a typical Instagram picture. And then people would start asking me to do that. And then they would want uh, people to sit around the table. That's you see all the hands coming in and... Uh, yeah, all that, all that kind of, uh, and those were like pictures I had been taken in the past as well. I mean, there's nothing I hadn't done yet as far as that goes. But then uh, that was what the new, uh, yeah, new sort of more casual style was. And if you, uh, you know, like lighting things from the back and having light coming through the food, um, I guess that. That's the opposite, of, sort of the opposite, but that was something that was probably an old-fashioned look by now because uh, you see that there was too much time spent on the lighting and it doesn't look have that uh, raw, real yeah. look. Do you think the real food photographers from the first hour do, who are spending a lot of time to recomposing an image for food and lighting and everything, do you think we are an endangered species? <laughs> Uh, no, it depends. I think everybody, things come and go and everybody should just stick to what he does. But at a certain point, uh, you won't be the most uh, asked photographer if you keep doing that. So if you want to keep working, then you will have to adapt to what people ask. Yeah. So then you have to uh, look at, uh, listen to the briefing. And, uh, and also, if you have a website and you have examples of your work, you know, a young art director will look at that and they'll just not hire you because that's not what they're looking for. There was a time when everybody, I was the first one in Holland 
doing food with, on bl black plexiglass plates so with a black background and lighting it in a mysterious way that it looked a little mysterious. Every restaurant wanted that <clears throat> because I did it for Yanni Boer with his cookbook for the Libreia, three-star restaurant, and all the hip Spanish chefs were doing that. And then everybody who felt that he wanted to become a chef or was almost a chef or had a pretty good restaurant, they all wanted that. Same with on white. I was shooting a lot on white as well, lighting it from the bottom, which in the USA, Charlie Trotter was doing with his cookbooks. I think he was one of the first ones that was there. And then uh, my friend Tony Leduc from Belgium started doing that, but then making layers. and uh, and But all these things... Um, yeah, that doesn't fit with with uh, the the Instagram look at all anymore. So, and maybe for young people, it looks old fashioned. Probably you're like, hey, that uh, that's what my grandpa did. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, what I, what I am noticing is that I'm um, uh, I'm I'm creating food photography, especially for Instagram for Olifine and I make um, a really nice food photography uh, the way we like it um, for the website. So I, I differentiate for Instagram and for the website of the restaurant. And so... Uh, of course, that's, that's also a different kind of a thing. I think that we can, we can um, flourish in that way to distantiate ourselves from all the simple food photographers because everybody who makes a lucky shot of a of a dish from from the top is a food photographer nowadays well the, the thing is there's also still technique <clears throat> that'll probably change too but um, even with the best telephone uh, you make a nice shot and you want to make a nice glossy beautiful uh, i don't mean glossy like shiny but uh, you want to make a cool cookbook and you want this uh, photo printed as a double spread, it's just not going to uh, work out from your phone. The phones are uh, just still not good enough for that. Uh, but I'm very sure they will be. <laughs> so so uh, um, that's just a matter of time that then also you can make uh, beautiful and then a matter of uh, if you also know the technique how to... Uh, you know, prepare these photographs for printing, then you can combine using the phone with, uh, with, uh, and I think it's great, these phones. It's fun to uh, work more directly. But the, the, the same things we are talking about now were uh, when, when digital photography started, when there was a digital camera, like before that, uh, to do nice black and white, white photos, you had to know how to develop film and you had to uh, learn in the darkroom how to print pictures and to make certain parts of the picture lighter and darker. And yeah. um, and now you have to learn Photoshop, uh, even though now there's also, then if you're good at Photoshop, uh, that's nice, but there's people who only know uh, 20 uh, cool apps and know which app to use to to change the picture and that they also get good results. So things are really changing. Yeah. So how do you see the future of food photography then? I don't, I don't know. I think that for uh, uh, different things and different purposes, I don't think, I think that definitely restaurants and hotels, uh, because they have to be careful. And in the, at the end of the year, it's about uh, small percentages of money that they uh, make, uh, they will not hire photographers for their um, publicity purposes for websites and uh, and uh, social media. Um, I do think that there will be chefs, of course, that who want to make a cookbook will, f at least for the time being, they will have to hire a photographer for that if they want it to be really good. But then I think also the the profession of photography is is become. I mean the the, the the money that uh, we photographers used to receive, like a magazine or 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 a company, say, well, like what? Like a restaurant would never pay me ever again the money that they used to pay me uh, ten years ago. Yeah, how much percentage did it drop down in your business? Well, I think I think I th well, no, I haven't changed my my prices. I I'm just working less, and Corona started, so uh, I haven't 
try to see what happens if I keep going because it's 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 very quiet now as far as that goes. But I think that um, that you would have to at least uh, to still be competitive and get work. It's gone down by at least fifty percent. And magazines were already doing that. I mean, if you worked for a magazine, that was like okay, well, you did it for you know that people see your work in the magazine. But they had very different theories. And of course, if you work for an advertising agency for for Unilever or something, um, I think there the money is still probably the same. Um, but um, you know, because then you have to you know shoot packaging and also be able to make like little photos that are films at the same time and and that's actually very hard because that's not like instagram that's like uh, you still have to do that in your photo studio and you still have to make sure that if you take a picture of a can of uh, beans that you see the top of the can and the side of the can and that it's still completely straight so you now have to correct perspective so all these things uh that will probably stay a, a, a profession, um, but that was never my thing. So for me, uh, uh, yeah, I was working for restaurants and hotels, and now I'm in the now I'm in the food business. <laughs> yes, <laughs> but what about food of uh, video? Because you made a lot of videos too. You are yeah, that was also fun. Well, that's also that's that's basically sort of the same thing. Because now. Uh, uh, then you know you you were I was creative in montaging films and making doing things, and now there's apps that you can just you know put video into the app and uh, choose the music and choose the speed and then they'll sort of mix the things together and uh, it'll be a, a completely cool. Video. But still, that requires some skills too. Yeah, it requires some skills. Yeah, but these, it's a, there's quite a difference from skills that anybody can learn in 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 a week. Then skills that uh, you had to have knowledge of everything from scratch. That's 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 different. Like it, when we started with Photoshop and working with digital photography, you had to know about color spaces and color management and 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 pixels and uh, all the basic things that are very important. And somebody that now was just sort of you know he, he, they can skip all this knowledge and get the right app shoot the footage with their phone and feed it into the app and have a cool video something different and that's what these like marketing communications companies a lot of them working for restaurants now for example they hire all these people you know they studied marketing and communication so they are not about the technique but they know what they have to communicate and then they learn all these little fun apps and things and they could do this fast and cheap for restaurants and hotels and so they could charge like, I don't know, a few hundred euros a month and then uh, do all the apps, do the social media, make the little films. So there's all these companies now uh, uh, who have like 50 uh, young people working for them who do the advertising for uh, for restaurants because they're good and fast with Instagram and they're good and fast with all these apps. and 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 then, of course... And these people studied marketing communication and learned all this other stuff on the side. Um, but you don't have to uh, learn everything about lenses and all the things that we used to learn when we went to school uh, for photography. But do you think that they are taking over our business? Ah, uh, No, no, no. I don't think anybody can take... You know, if I wanted to, I could have done the same thing. And I still can. I mean, I'm smart enough to uh, learn all these apps, and uh, and I know a few already, and I know all these tricks, and uh, uh, I would be able to do this well. You gave workshops, right, for photography with a smartphone? Yeah, 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 yeah. So I, if I would want, I would do that, but um, um, it's not what I want to do. That's uh, that's uh, so. So for me, that's uh, um, I'm actually uh, I'm working on a book right now, which is a new Magic in the Kitchen cookbook. And I've already shot a few chefs, so I'm also going to be shooting your uh, husband soon. Oh, nice! Uh, <laughs> but that's a 
that's uh, the, uh, the new magic in the kitchen uh, uh, book. So it's the same book as 30 years ago, but then uh, then with a sort of a new look, a little bit of new look. And I'm doing that together with a, a Dutch magazine called the Stern Chef magazine. We started actually before Corona started. And then we did our first few chefs. And because of Corona and not beginning to go out, we stopped it for a while, obviously, because it's sort of not done to go to uh, travel all over the country and make a book like that. So uh, uh, I'm waiting for the, uh, I'm going to, we're going to start very soon. So, so that's, uh, that's a project that I'm very much looking forward to. Um, but I would not be looking forward to, uh, to doing Instagram uh, uh, as a way to still be able to shoot some photos for restaurants and hotels. That, that, that would not be my, uh, my thing. No. No, we just keep on photographing with our own camera. What kind of camera do you use, actually? Uh, I have a what is it, Nikon? I don't, you know, if you ask me that, I don't even know by heart. But it's a Nikon a D something, which uh, I bought a year ago, and then it was the newest Nikon there was, uh, so with a lot of pixels and very perfect. And uh, I started uh, with a Nikon FM. Uh, when that came out and from that time I never changed going to another one but for me it doesn't make any difference a camera brand no it's it's the eye of the photographer yeah that's what divides that's what divides amateurs from professionals people who start talking about which camera you use or whatever this or that I think that um, the brand doesn't make the difference in uh, in anything no Totally agree with that. So tell me about your experiences with the Food Photo Festival. You are going there. What You went there from the, from, from the start, right? No, no, I didn't go to the one in Spain. I did participate with pictures. And then, um, 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 and then now I went there two times. And... Uh, I think it's just a lot of fun to uh, to party with my photographer friends. <laughs> so, <laughs> yes, I had a lot of a great time with you. <laughs> you know, we had such a good time, so that's a reason to go. And then also, um, you learn from it because you know it's 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 uh, you see what everybody else in the world is doing and uh, what's going on, and it uh, puts you back. Uh, uh, you see things. I remember actually at the last we we were talking about Instagram and I remember we had uh, I went with Tony we went to a lecture and we both didn't really do to Instagram about uh, somebody that was lecturing about Instagram using Instagram for photographers and and so this woman came uh, this 24 year old woman came who was making tons of money and working for all the big food companies in the United States by taking Instagram food photos. <laughs> And she gave a lecture on how she did this, and, uh, and we were like, "Oh my God!" It made us sort of like, "Oh my God, this is uh, this is." Uh, but it did make us realize that even Tony, um, you know, uh, pimped up his Instagram account, and I've started an Instagram account and started putting things on my Instagram account, and uh, now I haven't done it in at least four months, I think, in three months, I think the Instagram. Uh, my other work sort of prevented me from having time or even thinking about it. It's an important uh, medium now. And for my my food company, uh, um, I hired a company, one of those companies I was talking about, to uh, to do all the Instagram for uh, for Cook Like a Chef. Yeah, how ironic. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, yeah, yeah. So they, uh, you know, they just do it all and i don't uh, i don't deal with it <laughs> but for, for me it's very important that there is something like the food for the festival that did differentiate uh, the amateurs from the professionals oh yeah that that is really a great initiative it is so much uh, so much fun well actually the the the, the, the if, i think the definition of a professional is just somebody who makes money with uh, what he's doing and if somebody is like doesn't know photography like we learned it with uh, learning all this technique and uh, and uh, but he just takes pictures with his phone and he makes a lot of money it 
yeah, then he and he does that with shooting food. Then he's a professional food photographer. Uh, he's only he's only he's only another breed of professional photo food photographer because he did not learn the profession like we did. But I think every branch has that. There's people who uh, who are have very good successful restaurants who don't know the old techniques of uh, making certain sauces and uh, yeah. preparing food with French tradition. And they know, uh, but they do know the modern techniques of hanging a piece of meat in, in, in warm water at 53 degrees. Yeah. Uh, so that's, uh, that's it. But they, they will not have learned how to, uh, I don't know, how to, you know, make, make just, just cook the piece of meat at the right temperature, uh, just doing it in a pan. Uh, because now you could just do it in uh, in the hot water, and then you can never uh, ruin it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. So there are all these things that are they changed. Everything changes, but it's okay. Yes. Well, I'm having an interview with uh, with Gunther, uh, the organization of the um, Food Photo Festival on Friday next time. So, do you have a question for him? I can ask him. Winter, when are we going to have the next food photo festival? Because it is really a great initiative and a lot of fun. And uh, so we're looking forward to that. Yes, me too, me too. I will wrap this up, but I have a, like a rapid, rapid fire, like 20 questions you need to answer within three seconds. No, I have to answer that. that, that that's impossible so I, to do. Oh, it's easy. Okay, are you ready? Here he goes. Who is your greatest teacher? I will say my, my, my uh, and I don't know his name, but my professor I had in art school, and I don't remember his name. Okay, it's okay. What's your life motto? Uh, enjoy life. <laughs> What do you wish for more on earth? Wait, 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 I don't understand. More than I need some one thing to wish more than from another. What do you wish? No, if if you want more peace on earth, or more love, or more happiness, or more mushrooms. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. What do you think should be? Well, I, obviously, uh, more peace and happiness. Yeah. What is your most iPhone. precious? <laughs> <laughs> What is the first thing you do after a hard day's work? Uh, I pour myself a glass of uh, wine. What kind of wine? Red or white? Uh, that depends. I like uh, usually white wine and uh, often with bubbles. Hmm, yes. <laughs> What is your ultimate luxury? Um, my ultimate luxury is not having to do anything. <laughs> What can we wake you for in the middle of the night? Sex. <laughs> What do you do to relax? Sex. <laughs> What character trait do you find very annoying about yourself? Being pushy. What's your favorite restaurant worldwide? Dilly Brian. What's your most memorable dish you have ever eaten? Um, uh, uh, a pois. No. Uh, um, oh, wait. Uh, Creme brulee made from a pois. Oh, wow. <laughs> What temptation can you not resist? Uh, chocolate. <laughs> oh, alcohol. More than one. <laughs> uh, what kind of leadership style do you adopt? Loose. What other profession would you have done? Uh, maybe being a chef, cooking. What dish would you ask for the most if you had your own personal chef? Um, okay, That's, these are things you cannot answer in three seconds. That's very hard. Uh, <laughs> uh, chili con carne. <laughs> ah. <laughs> when do you get seriously angry at work? Uh, when people fuck me. Which person in the industry do you look up to? Um, uh, Yoli Boer. What is your biggest fear? Dying. Who influenced your choice of profession? 
my uh, my uh, aunt who gave me the uh, first camera when I was uh, 10 or 11. So the last question, sex or an excellent dinner? Sex. <laughs> Okay, well, thank you for this interview. Okay. Thank you all for listening. I hope you had lots of fun. If you want to know more about me or this podcast or everything that I'm doing, go to artfoodpleasure.com and there you will find all the information you need and all the links and downloads. Thank you all and I hope to see you next week.